YouTube, hey there, it's Casey Demon here, TaxSellAcademy.com. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the Tax Sell Podcast. As always, if you enjoy podcasts, check us out, TaxSellPodcast.com. Let's go ahead and record that audio version right now. Welcome to the Tax Sell Podcast, where tax sell investing is made easy. My name is Casey Dimon. I'm a tax sell veteran. I am the leading tax sell expert. I'm the author of the Tax Sell Playbook. I'm the founder of the Tax Sell Academy, and I'm your host right here on the Tax Sell Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me on today's podcast episode. This is a completely free podcast and is brought to you through and because of the Tax Sell Academy. All right, so as I'm scheduling all my podcasts and analyzing all the comments and the questions that I get asked, one thing that I do is I try to take all that stuff into consideration to make sure that the trainings I put out will help the most people possible. So with that said, I want to do a two-part series, not on the success stories or about how incredible this business is, because it truly is, but I wanted to do a two-part series on the pitfalls of tax sales investing. Now, I am not one of those pie-in-the-sky type teachers that will tell you nothing can ever go wrong in this business. Instead, I want to teach you what can go wrong. So, you can avoid those issues. All right, on today's episode, we're talking about tax lien pitfalls. So I've got other episodes all about the process and all the details, but in short, when you're a tax lien investor, you're investing in properties where the taxes were not paid on time. So in a tax lien state, you're buying a lien against the property. You're not buying the property, you're buying a lien secured by real estate. Now, if the owner, the delinquent owner, comes in and pays off that lien within the set time period allowed by state statute, then you'll earn interest on your money. If they don't come in within the time allowed for them to redeem or cancel that lien, you could become the property owner. That's it kind of in a nutshell. Now, much of the entire tax sale business revolves around two things, the process and the property. If you thoroughly understand both of these things, it's a no-lose situation. But the reality is, there's quite a bit involved with each one of these. Most of the issues arise when people think that they know everything possible about both of these, but they've inadvertently overlooked something, or they simply didn't know what they didn't know. So, of course, the tax lien business is pretty easy from the outside looking in. It's investing in tax liens with the hopes to earn interest that's backed by real estate, right? Worst case scenario, you get to own that property if they don't pay those taxes back. Now, when people ask me to compare tax liens and tax deeds, here's my typical response. So tax liens are going to be easier investments that provide lower returns most of the time. You research the property, you buy a lien against that property, and most of the time, your profit will come when you go outside and check your mailbox, you'll get a check one day. Now, tax deeds will produce higher returns most of the time, but they do require quite a bit more effort since you have to do that same research. But in order to get your profit, to get your money back plus your profit, you actually have to sell the property, which means you have to deal with maintenance issues, maybe repair issues, marketing, closing, all that kind of stuff. So higher return, higher effort for tax deeds, lower return, lower effort, for tax liens. Both of them are fantastic investment vehicles depending on the specific circumstances behind your finances. Now, since we're talking about tax liens, let's go over some of the pitfalls of the tax lien business and discuss how we can avoid those pitfalls. So when you buy a tax lien, you're investing in a priority lien with the expectation to either make interest off your investment or become the eventual owner of the property. But the problem is that many people don't understand there's a competitive aspect to this. In a lot of areas, you simply can't just walk in, get the lien you want at the price and rate you want to get it at, sit back and collect interest. Unfortunately, there are other people in the world that want to do that same exact thing. So it's a competitive type sell, at least it's handled that way. Now, some areas are very, very competitive with lots and lots of other bidders. Other areas are not so competitive but there is a bidding process you need to understand. And that's where our first pitfall comes into play. 
you can actually lose money by investing in tax liens. It is possible. So if you look at a state like Florida, for example, where the state maximum interest rate is 18%, it does not necessarily mean you're going to earn 18%. Florida is a bid down state, meaning the person willing to accept the lowest interest rate will win. So the bidding will start off at 18%, and then somebody will accept 17, 16, 15, all the way down to the lowest percentage acceptable. It could very well end up at one half of 1%. So you still made money perhaps on paper, although your time investment and maybe some expenses going to that auction were not gonna be reimbursed to you at one half of 1%, especially if they paid off in the first month or two. Now, you wanna lose money outright with tax liens. Let me show you an example how to do that. Some states use what are called overbids, where the person willing to pay the most amount of money will end up as the winner of that lien. So for example, let's say you have a tax lien that has a face value of $100. That $100 is the amount of the delinquent taxes, interest, and fees owed to the county. Now you go to the auction, and you buy that tax lien for $120. So you pay $20 more than the face value of that lien. And in some states, the face value is the only thing that will collect interest. That $20 was just for you to get the opportunity to own that $100 tax lien. So at 10% interest, based off that $100 face value, it's gonna take you two years before you make at least $20 to break even. So that means if the owner of the property pays off your lien anytime between now and 23 months, you are guaranteed to lose money. That's a prime example of failing to understand the process behind the product you are investing in. The solution here is to understand the process thoroughly, to become a student of the process and to know exactly what you are doing. I've seen people blow loads and loads of money that they will never get back thinking that they're going to earn interest on all of it. And in some places you do in fact earn interest on all of it, but other places you don't earn interest on all of it. So know all the different technicalities, all the details of how the interest is applied to your investment, do all of your calculations ahead of time, and be sure you're making a wise investment. Another issue with tax liens is that a lot of new investors tend to overestimate the number of tax liens that will become foreclosable. So in other words, they think that buying the lien will mean they will likely become the owner of that property at some point in the future. And many new investors even approach tax lien investing as kind of a workaround to get a property for cheap. They expect the property. Now, that possibility does, of course, exist. That lien is backed by the real estate. But statistically speaking, less than 5% of tax liens will ever reach the point of being able to be foreclosed. So out of every 20 liens you purchase, you might have one that reaches the point of being foreclosable. And odds are that property likely won't be the nicest property you have a lien against. So when you invest in tax liens, your primary objective here should be to earn interest, not to get the property. If you want to invest in the property, consider tax deeds instead. We also have some procedural type issues that can be really confusing, especially to new tax lien investors. Now, every single state is a little bit different and every single state varies in what's required of tax lien investors. In some states, the tax lien investor needs to have a PhD, it seems like, in tax lien laws to make sure everybody receives the correct paperwork at the exact time and done so in the correct manner. For example, in some states, after a set period of time, the tax lien holder is responsible for providing certified notices to the correct parties, and they must document it and be able to prove that they did it according to state statute. Then you must go to the courts and submit the required affidavits within the set time periods. And if you miss those time periods, it can really become quite a hassle to foreclose on that lien. 
then there's more work after that point too. Again, some states are very, very easy. Others are not easy at all. Be sure you know what your tax lien laws require of you before you invest in a new state. And then of course, if you do reach the point where the lien expires and goes unredeemed, you could become the owner of that property. In some states, it's a very, very simple process. You submit the paperwork and that's it. You're the new owner. In other states, it does require a full-blown foreclosure, which can be hindered, of course, by your attorney and the speed in which they work, by the volume of the court's docket, by perhaps even bankruptcy of the delinquent taxpayer and all sorts of other fun stuff. And not to mention, none of this is free. It'll cost you some cash to get through all these steps. My advice here is to make sure that you have the equity in your property once you will reach the other side and become the owner of that property. Can you sell that property and make enough money to reimburse you for the lien, for your interest, and for all of these expenses involved in becoming the owner of that property? So now let's say that all that is complete, right? You've gone through the whole process of owning the lien, the redemption period has expired, you foreclosed that lien, and now you're one of the lucky ones who acquired a piece of real estate because somebody did not come and redeem their tax lien. But what now? Well, now you have to go back and look at the due diligence that you performed a year or two years ago. And we have to hope when you were researching the property at that time that you did it correctly. Because whether you invest in tax liens or tax deeds, your actual property research should be the same. Your investment is backed by real estate. So that real estate, it's pretty darn important, right? When you performed your due diligence, you needed to make sure not only that the value is there, of course that's important, but also you need to make sure that you aren't going to put yourself in a bind if you were to acquire that property by foreclosing that tax lien. You likely don't want to purchase a property that has contamination issues, for example, or a property that is going through a demolition during the time you own the tax lien on that property or any other sort of major issue like that. And the only way to make sure that your investment is secure is by performing the proper due diligence initially prior to purchasing your lien and then, in some states, hoping that nothing changes drastically while you wait for that lien to mature. It's all about your research. So those are just a few of the pitfalls of investing in tax liens. Listen, I will never tell you the bad stuff about this business to scare you away from this business. I think it's the most incredible business on planet Earth, but I tell you these things to help educate you. I tell you these things to help you understand the importance of knowing exactly what you are doing to make sure that you are taking the time to invest in learning about this business or getting the proper training so you don't make these same mistakes. I truly hope that this episode has helped you out. Stay tuned for next week's episode on the pitfalls of tax deed investing so I can teach you how to avoid those as well. If this episode did help you out or any of our other episodes have helped you out, please do us a huge favor and leave some positive feedback on whatever podcasting platform you're listening to us on right now. Now, in the meantime, if you are looking for more information on tax sell investing, there are a whole bunch of links in today's show notes that can help you get started. Take care, and we'll see you next time right here on the Tax Sell Podcast. Bye-bye.